Hello students, welcome to part three of our narrative writing series, helping you write your college application essay. So today we're going to talk about introductions. I know none of us like hearing about it because in all other types of essays, the introduction can often be the hardest part of our essay because we need to come up with a hook, we need to put our thesis statement, how do we bridge the hook to the thesis statement. The good news is narrative writing is a little bit more creative, so you don't need to write a thesis statement like you're used to, although you still do need that one big main idea that encompasses your whole paper. It doesn't necessarily have to show up in the introduction immediately. So step number one, you need to make sure that your essay, your personal essay for narrative writing starts off strong. Now that's obvious, right? You don't want to start off any type of essay week, but what I mean by this is it needs to pack a punch. It needs to be something that's memorable because ultimately there are two tips that I can give to make sure that you make your essay strong, especially in the beginning. And tip number one is start it fast. You don't need this long drawn out introduction. In fact, you're going to find that your pacing for your essay will be a lot better in terms of your tone and how it's read if your introduction starts off pretty quick. Not something that's like 10, 15, 20 sentences long and gives you background information for whatever's happening. Some effective essays actually sometimes start off in the middle of things or what's known as in media res. In other words, it's going to put you straight into the action and then circle back to kind of the beginning and the background and all that. That is one option. Other essays that I've read that have done well is they actually start at the end and then circle back and go forward. Now you still can go in chronological order starting at the beginning, but you don't want to spend so much time there that you waste a lot of space. Because remember, your essays are only going to be roughly between 300 and 600 words roughly. I believe they max you out at 650 and the least amount of words that you can have are 250. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. A lot of people like to do that 500 word essay, which is usually about a page or two, depending on if you're double spacing it or single spacing it. But that's why you need to start fast. If your introduction's too long drawn out, it's going to become monotonous and it's going to be super boring. So tip number two then is you got to make it memorable. Now, these are all very obvious and pretty vague terms that I'm using here. But I can't really be more specific than this because every one of you is going to write your college essay different. There's no formula that you can follow to make it exactly perfect. Because part of it is going to be creativity. Part of it's going to be what you're feeling in the moment and how you want to convey your voice and your tone to the college admissions officers. Every single essay is going to be different. There's people that start with a longer introduction and make it work, and there's people that use one sentence as an introduction, and it's mind-blowing. So both can actually work, but in both cases, there are some similarities that we're going to look at, which is why... We need to look at some examples, and they're going to be examples that you're familiar with. So we're going to head on over to Johns Hopkins University and look at the three college essays that they have up there that we've already looked at. So this first one, uh, Jerry's Finding My Voice, let's just look at the introduction. I looked up and flinched slightly. So already that first sentence, it's not necessarily mind-blowing to me, but there's a couple things that I'm thinking of. Number one... It's intriguing because I'm wondering, well, why is he flinching? And number two, I really like that the vocab choice is very direct. But then he goes on. There were at least 60 of them. I still don't know what the them is. So he's doing a good job at building some suspense. We don't know why he's flinching and we don't know who the them is. Far more than expected. I had 30 weeks to teach them, still don't know who the them is, the basics of public speaking. Okay, so probably the them is people. Gritting my teeth, I split my small group of tutors among the crowd and sat down for an impromptu workshop with the 8th graders. Now we know who the them is. They were inexperienced, monotone, and quiet. In other words, they reminded me of myself. And then notice the ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot. So this is an effective introduction because it builds suspense. It keeps us wondering for a few sentences until letting us know that it's 8th graders. So there's also a little bit of humor there. 
And then at the end with the ellipsis, that's a creative way of connecting it together. He's not afraid of them because they're eighth graders. He's afraid of them because they kind of remind him of himself, probably when he first started, judging by the title of this essay. But that is a pretty effective introduction. But that's one way of doing it. If we scroll down to the next essay, we have On Potatoes, which is a very humorous essay. right? And humor is difficult to pull off, but if you're good at it, you can do it. And this person, Madison, started off with a quote. If you had to choose one food to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? So this is a daring start because if you don't pull off this essay after this introduction, the introduction then ends up failing you because it's terrible. But this essay is actually pretty good. And it does make us wonder, like, is this going to be a lame essay? You're starting off with such a stupid question. But the student's able to use it for her advantage. And she does a fantastic job on talking about potatoes correlating with her life and, and the meaning and the purpose behind it and who she is as an individual. So it's actually very creative. So that would make this introduction work very well. If you had to choose one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's kind of asking us the question as the readers too. So you can start off with a question. You can start off with a quote, but it needs to work. It cannot come off as cliched or lame. So notice the first two essays here start off very differently. One person started off with a quote, one line. Another person started off with a shorter paragraph and a bit of a description leading us into an ellipsis. But you could also say that this on potatoes one really has this second part as an introduction too. So if we were to put that and combine it, she goes on and says, having had this question asked of me many a time, I realized that such an inquiry must be considered practically. The correct answer would keep me happily sustained for the rest of my years, whereas the wrong choice would leave me tormented until I wither away from monotony. So clearly she's being overly philosophical about these potatoes. But if you skip down towards the end, it says, I believe that I've come to such a response. Potatoes. So this introduction works because it's long and it's drawn out after this question. It's overly philosophical, but then it leads you to this idea of something so simple, potatoes. It doesn't seem to fit to use all of these great vocabulary words and be overly philosophical, but then come to the conclusion of just talking about potatoes. That's weird, but it works and it's clever. So then if we move down to a third one, rock climbing. This is one that we dealt with in the last video as well. So there I was, hanging from the precipice, muscles trembling, fingers aching, sweat tripping onto my spotter 20 feet below. Notice he's starting off in media res. He doesn't talk about approaching the wall. He doesn't talk about getting to the rock climbing place. He just says, there I was, I'm hanging from the rock wall. Think of it kind of like TV shows or some movies. They might start you off in the middle of action like a car chase scene and then go back and say three days earlier. You can do something like that in your essay. You just got to think of what actually works. So here, this first sentence in this opening works because they're very strong verbs and we're wondering, where is this going to go? Right? He's hanging. Is he going to fall? Is he, is he going to make it? What's going to happen? And then he goes on and explains that a little bit more. Notice this person's full introduction is longer than the other two. But it still works. So that's why it's hard to give a specific framework. All I can really tell you is you want to f start fast, which these people did. They, each one of these started off right away. They didn't spend a lot of time giving us background information over who they were. right? So these are some examples of some good introductions that you can kind of model yourself off of. But I do want to go back and I want to show you some poor examples because we've already seen the good ones, but now we should look at a couple of the bad ones and make sure that we avoid doing this. So here's some examples. Number one, everyone has a passion and mine is basketball. It's too straightforward. It's a little bit more in a passive voice, right? It's not direct enough. Plus, there's really no creativity here and chances are this person is just answering the prompt. And that's what you wanna stray away from. I would say, one of the biggest things to avoid is to make sure that you don't regurgitate or vomit back the prompt. 
We're used to doing that in academic writing where if you have a prompt about Mark Twain and the meaning of a book or the theme of a book or a poem or anything like that or causes of World War II, we then put that in our introduction, either as the thesis or as the first line. So if we're asked the question, what were some of the causes of World War II, we end up saying some of the causes of World War II was blah, 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 blah. So here the person's prompt could have been something like, tell me about a passion that you have in your life and what it means to you. So this person just said, everyone has a passion and mine is basketball. It's not very memorable. You're answering it too straightforwardly. Number two, the second example, one thing that passes the time for me is watching movies. It's very similar to the first one, right? There's not much to it. What about this next one? This last one that I'm going to share with you is actually has some good, but also some bad. One significant experience I had was when I went camping with my dad a few years ago. There were trials and tribulations mixed in with excitement and joy that made me realize that life is a mixture of emotion. So that one's difficult because there is some things that I do like about it. I do like that ending of saying that this this camping trip showed that there were bad things that happened, but also good things that happened, and that it's a metaphor for life, and that life itself is always going to be these ups and downs, highs and lows, and a mixture of emotion. That's a clever topic. That's a good idea. But starting it off the way that they did was way too direct and straightforward. Notice that that is what I was just mentioning previously, where a lot of people tend to take the prompt, and so this prompt would have been, talk to me about or discuss a significant experience that you had in your life, or an experience that you learned something from. And then this person just answers it in the first line, one significant experience I had was when I went camping with my dad a few years ago. Now, what can you do instead though? Well, maybe you start off in the middle of this camping trip. Maybe... You start off with some of the trials and tribulations and you describe the events that's happening. See, because one of the biggest things that you need to realize is that when you're writing a personal essay, when you're writing descriptively, when you're writing narratively, you want to show, don't tell. And I'm going to repeat that. When you write narratively like this, you want to show, don't tell. So you don't want to necessarily start off with flashing lights saying, here's my big idea. You want to describe how you came to that conclusion. So if you start off fast, and if you make your introduction memorable, you're on your way to writing a much better essay. Because remember, these people reading your essays are reading tons of them each day. And by and large, they all kind of sound the same. So you need to stand out. You need to keep them somewhat entertained right from the beginning. You need to make yourself stand out to help yourself the most in this process of writing your essay.